Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us for the panel discussion on uh, multilingual learning. Uh, so uh, today we're trying to answer the question probably most of us have uh, wondered themselves about is uh, whether it's possible or not to learn more than one language at the same time. A and um, a question for the audience, have you ever tried to do it yourself? Have you ever tried to learn more languages? at the same time, more than one language at the same time. So in this panel discussion, there are three uh, special guests with us. Uh, they are all experts in this topic and um, they will share uh, their opinion with us. So um, you also have the chance to ask them questions. So please do it in the chat. I will try to uh, address the questions to them. And so before we get started, I'd like to present them. Uh, the panelists today are Lina Vasquez. Uh, Lina is a polyglot. She speaks several languages. She is uh, um, running three YouTube channels very successfully. She's also a language coach, communication coach, and public speaker, uh, passionate about combining languages with personal development uh, topics. Fantastic. Hi, Lina. Hello, everyone. It's awesome to be here. And uh, the second uh, speaker, the second panelist is Stefano. Uh, he's a professional freelancer translator and a line language tutor for multiple languages. He speaks 10 languages and is working on building up on a couple more, including Georgian. Fantastic. <laughs> in uh, his YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube channel is called uh, Lingua e Passione in Italian. Um, he shares in this channel his passion uh, and uh, language learning tips uh, and is talking about different languages in different languages. Ciao Stefano. Ciao everybody, thanks for having me. Uh, the third uh, speaker is Elisa. Elisa has learned 25 languages and she teaches 13 of them in the various combination. Her passion is to help people speak their favorite language or more uh, languages from the very beginning. She believes that uh, with the right method, anyone can learn any language. And uh, she's also author of a book, How to Become Fluent in Multiple Languages in a Fun and Efficient Way. Ciao, Elisa. Ciao, ciao a tutti, hello. So, Guys, I would like to you know, break the ice. In the meantime, we are uh, probably getting questions from the audience, but I would like to ask the first question. So I think many people think and say that it's not simply possible, right? Or not advisable to, to learn more languages at the same time. So what do you guys think about this? Is it possible or not to learn uh, multiple languages uh, at the same time? Who wants to get to, to break the ice today? I'll start. <laughs> Someone has to break the ice. Well, I think, first of all, if we didn't think we could learn multiple languages, I don't think any of us would be here. Am I right? Um, yeah, I definitely think that there are many different factors that come into, you know, what does it actually mean to learn multiple languages? I think um, a lot of people have different definitions and sometimes some people think that you know, where do you, where, do, where is the outcome? Where do you even say, I have learned this language, now I'm going to start another one. I think there is a lot to do with motivation, which I, we will all cover in a second, and as well to do with time management and purpose. Why are you learning the language? Um, but yeah, I guess the, the short answer is yes, to make it very simple. Um, and um, which languages did you, did you learn at the same time? So, uh, so actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in the time management topic then. But I, mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, I studied French, German, and Spanish simultaneously whilst at high school, and those were all at you know quite a high level. And I also practiced them outside, so I did all three at the same time. Now, in my adult life, I've probably studied like actively studied two at the same time. The reason being that obviously 
as a teenager, I had way more time to focus on language learning and my objective for why I wanted to use those languages was very different. So I was learning them because I had to pass tests and I wanted to live abroad. So that was my main goal. Whereas now, I think my definition of learning a language or learning multiple languages has changed because learning to me means integrating into my life now so because i you know as an adult suddenly a lot of other priorities come up in your life and and you do get to be a bit more picky with where you put your time so i mix my work life and my everyday life with languages so i'm constantly learning them and i always say this as well even in in my native languages so latvian and english i'm learning new things every single day because it's a process that never ends. So you want to integrate it into things that serve a purpose in your life. Thanks, thanks, Lina. So, and uh, and uh, Stefano, um, so you also learn yourself many many languages, right? If so, uh, you speak uh, fluently ten, and you are building up on more. So, how how did you? decide on the order of these uh, languages, for example, and uh, how, uh, how many languages uh, to learn at the same time? Well, I think uh, well, the, the order in which the languages come up, uh, it's almost uh, automatic. They come to me, it's not like I, I choose them. Uh, they come to me and I, I like the way they sound, so I start learning them. Usually this is, this is how, how it works. But uh, Talking about learning multiple languages at the same time, I think that uh, just like uh, Lina said, I think two is the um, the ideal number. I have sometimes started even three uh, at the same time, but I do think that um, the third one should be a little bit um, at at a higher level than than the two that I'm learning from from scratch because three from scratch um, starts being a little bit too much. Um, the main point for me is that the languages that I study at the same time should be sufficiently different uh, one from the other. And uh, the, the greater the difference, the greater the distance between the languages that I study simultaneously, the better, uh, the better results uh, I get. Super interesting. So um can, can you make an example of the two very different languages that you were learning and uh, what is exactly the trick for you so what, what makes uh, this to be successful well for example um <laughs> the first two languages that i've studied at the same time were finnish and japanese they are very different uh, <laughs> then um, um what else? Uh, well, Romanian and Icelandic also, they belong to different uh, families. They are very different, not only from a uh, standpoint, from a vocabulary standpoint, but also from a, a grammar standpoint. Uh, one language with, with grammatical cases, one language without grammatical cases, and, and so on. Um, what was the, um, the second part of the question again? Yeah, I was wondering what makes uh, this uh, be successful? So. Uh, is it the difference between the languages or how, is it just a, you know, a, a process of your learning that, that works so differently? Or? Yes, I, th I think prioritizing, prioritizing between the languages that you're learning uh, is, uh, is key. Uh, I usually um, dedicate maybe 75% um, of the time and dedication to the more difficult language uh, and only 25% to the easier language, for example. Uh, and this allows me to really concentrate if, even when I'm learning those languages uh, matters. For example, during in, in the morning, where I have more energy, especially mental energy, I tend to learn more difficult languages. Um, whereas in the afternoon and in the evening, when I'm sleep, when I'm sleepy, <laughs> um, I can almost relax with the less difficult language, a language that maybe is even close to my mother tongue or to another language that I already uh, that I am already fluent in, and um, this prioritizing um, helps a lot. Uh, concentrating your energies on the language that needs more effort, that is more challenging, needs more effort, 
and almost relaxing with the language that you um, that requires less efforts. Yeah, uh, so I would like to ask the next uh, question to Elisa now. Thanks, to Stefano. That's, that, that was really great. Um, Elisa, so uh, one question we, it comes from the audience, right? I think that's, uh, that's appropriate for you. So uh, when we talk about multiple languages, what, what do we exactly mean, right? Stefano said that he was able to, uh, to speak successfully. Uh, in uh, his adult, uh, say, two or three languages. Uh, and do you have a similar experience? What was the maximum number of languages that you could uh, learn at the same time? And uh, the second part, uh, because I imagine you were studying uh, a lot of them. Uh, so are there advantages or disadvantages, and uh, which ones? OK. So I. I hope I'll re I will remember everything. So, first of all, I um, I think that there is no limit in the number of languages you can learn at the same time. What really matters, uh, there are a couple of points. The, the first uh, uh, part is that you should dedicate at least a certain amount of time to each of the languages. And the weaker the language, the more time you have to spend with it. I don't think that you have to learn um, more multiple languages simultaneously uh, only at the same level. So whatever, uh, if you started some years ago and you want to pick up a similar language uh, to the one that you learned before, uh, it's perfectly fine. Even if you want to uh, take up more languages, what is important, what I think and in my experience, I have been teaching uh, multiple languages uh, um, for a long time now, and I've been learning multiple languages at the same time for 20 years. So for me, what I think is that, so I, I always see um, anyone can learn multiple languages at the same time. The difference is the method. There is not one method, but there are a couple of, uh, um, let's say, points which are very important. If you think of uh, when, uh, when and why people mix uh, languages up, I think, according to my experience, I talk to many people, not only students, but people at parties, because it's my passion. So well, I, it happened to me to talk to people and they said, oh, yeah, but I wanted to study this language, but I mix it up. And actually, what happens most of the time is that you mix languages up because you speak one much more than the other or uh, one much more than the other two or three you want to learn. So the point is not necessarily whether it's possible not learning uh, to learn multiple languages at the same time, because actually you learn uh, different things every day. It's not that at work they are going to tell you, uh, okay, can you learn this program and can you do, can you learn this other thing? You say, no, no, I only, I, I'm already learning one thing. I don't want to learn a second program. I don't want to learn a, a second skill. So of course we do it all the time uh, as, a, as children, as adults, uh, even if you think of dances, if you learn one dance and then you learn another one and uh, when you take up the third one or the fourth one, actually you don't mix them up anymore because for you each dance, and in this case each language has a different, uh, has what I call language features in the case of languages. So if you have a clear in your mind what language features are, you're never going to mix languages up. It's I never had a student uh, who, um, um, yeah, who was studying and it, it took him or her more than two or three uh, classes uh, to stop mixing uh, languages. Because the thing is that uh, the first point is to have language features uh, clear in your mind. What is a language feature? For example, Italian words almost never end in a consonant. Okay, there are a couple of exceptions, but normally if you, there are so many people who mix uh, Spanish and Italian up, and uh, uh, if you know, if you keep in mind that if a word is ending with a consonant, it must be most probably Spanish, then at least you will try to change it or you should try to change it in, in a way that it's more, uh, that respects more the language feature of the Italian language, for example. 
And regarding the fact of not studying, um, studying one or more languages at the same time, which belong to the same family or not, uh, the point is actually is that it's true that it takes more effort to, to keep them separate in your brain if you learn similar languages, but we really forget the, the advantage of it. When, for example, in a class I, I teach French, Spanish, and Italian, uh, when I when I teach, for example, the past tense, passato prossimo in Italian, and it takes maybe 10 minutes to understand how it works, even 15 sometimes, it depends on the group, and to start using it, of course, not just understanding, understanding it. Then when I, um, I pass to Spanish, for example, it takes 10 minutes, se seven minutes, and for the third language, it takes two, three minutes because the process is the same, the, the, the behavior is the same. So the, the reason why I really believe that learning uh, multiple languages in time, even if they belong to the same family, is a real advantage. Because if you learn, uh, let's say that you learn how to conjugate verbs in Portuguese, and then you, uh, you become fluent in Portuguese, you're very happy, you decide, I want to study Italian. Do you really want to go back to, uh, through the same conjugation tables all, uh, uh, all over again? I think it's much, much better that you can compare them. This is why I was talking about the method, because uh, if you compare what can be compared, not everything and not all the time. I'm not talking about speaking one word a lang language and one um, word uh, on an, in another language. It's really about comparing them uh, where it makes sense and learning their language features, which is very important to keep uh, them in a drawer in your mind. I hope I answered the question. So uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yes. <laughs> maybe well, uh, one small thing is was about the, I think you asked me about uh, the maximum number. It's a matter of time. Uh, uh, not in, you don't need to, to, uh, to learn a language for three hours in a row. It really depends on your uh, end goal. If you want to be fluent in a language as soon as possible, of course, you can only concentrate on one language. Uh, if you say, I have one month, I have a job interview, and I have to be uh, the best I can in one month. Of course, you have to concentrate on one language. But the, uh, the reason why I'm so passionate about learning multiple languages at the same time is because uh, um, I cannot get enough of them. I love languages. They are my door to the world. And I, I want to talk to different people and I like all languages. So I cannot wait. I cannot say, OK, I, I'm not such a planner that say, OK, in five years time, when uh, my uh, then language one and my language two uh, are perfect, I want to uh, pick up a third language. I cannot wait. So it depends on your reasons and on the time you have every day, a bit every day. and you will go forward. Thanks, uh, thanks, Elisa, Thank for uh, very inspiring words. I think uh, many people will find them inspiring too. Um, now I think it's time to um, uh, say, come again to uh, another question. Uh, I pick one, so I would like uh, Lina to answer this question. So uh, yeah, how do you manage, uh, Lina, to you know, learn um, more than one language, or how did you learn, uh, manage to learn multiple languages and uh, at the same time be able to, you know, keep up with things in your life, like doing other sports, other kind of activities, learning something, uh, some other, you know, working on other skills in your life? Great question. I would love to, to say I have a fully organized schedule and everything is, you know, placed, but I'm, I'm not someone actually that, you know, plans in, okay, I'm going to spend three hours on this language and we spend two hours on this language. My kind of, how I balance everything, I call it a flexible schedule. So to touch on what Elisa was actually saying, and she made a really great point about, you know, not having, okay, I'm going to spend this amount of time on language one and then on language two like i just like like her and everybody else here i love languages so for me it's always been about integrating the languages into my everyday activities and figuring out what my personal goals are so for example with german my goal is to speak like a native speaker so i put all of my time or i'm going to say most of my language learning time into german and that was for an extended period of time. So I think one mistake that a lot of people tend to make when they think about having goals and, and 
are struggling to manage and balance everything, you know, their, their work life, their hobbies and everything is, I think a lot of people don't think long term. And it can be very enticing to want to spend seven, or, you know, spend your time learning seven languages at once, but really think about what your own personal goals are. So for me, right now, like being completely honest, I am focused on a lot of things that aren't actually related to languages. And then there was a time when I started feeling guilty about it. And I thought, oh, how can I actually integrate my learning and, and where should I put my time? So what I tend to do is I tend to, for example, I meditate in Portuguese some mornings. So I incorporate a particular task that I do anyway or a particular habit that I have anyway and I attach the language to it and then I set myself short-term mid-term and long-term goals so for example um, with Portuguese I really really wanted to improve my Portuguese so I like to kind of I would say I shoot an arrow I go and do a thing and then I make a ton of mistakes and adjust it so what I mean by that is I challenge myself to hold business calls in Portuguese to now I've created, for example, a YouTube channel in Portuguese, which forces me to really step up. So I think, yeah, to answer the question um, before I go off on another tangent, but yeah, really, if you, if you can try and see how you can habit stack. So how can you stack a language where you are potentially already quite fluent in it and you, you don't need you know to put that much effort into improving it where can you stack that language onto something that is already a hobby of yours and for languages for me for example that i am a beginner in so mandarin is my my newest one it is really like that language i do have dedicated time every week to practice it because it's new it's not in my you know, unconscious ability where I don't need to try that hard to maintain it. I really do have to put conscious effort. So I would say if you are learning, for example, two languages, and this touches on what both Stefano and Elisa said as well, have them be at different levels or with all the languages that you speak, try and kind of juggle, okay, which one do I know best or which ones am I most comfortable in is probably a better way to put it. And how can I combine them with, with things that I already do? So if you go to the gym, if you go running, listening to a podcast in that language, um, booking in, you know, calls and, and catch up sessions with your friends online now, of course, in those languages, and then have your own personal study time for the languages that you're not as strong in. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, and so which uh, so which one of these uh, ways to you know integrate to activities do you um find uh, say more satisfactory is mm -hmm. there any one that really makes you feel like yeah this really added something right integrating this language with this uh, uh, other skill i'm working on this really made a difference right? it made change in my mm -hmm. my mindset about this I think, well, for me personally, because I am a very extroverted person and I enjoy talking to people and I enjoy kind of learning through people, for me, the most effective things that I've done have been, yeah, interactions. So having meetings and creating videos, I would say actually creating videos has probably been the, like, if we think about which activity gives you or do you spend the least amount of time on that gives you the most amount of results for me has been creating videos and also teaching so this this can happen you know both when you are like actually teaching live or when you are you're creating videos and, and maybe teaching or talking in that language i found that those types of interactions like almost what, what you could call real life scenarios so Think about when you create a video, think about when you are having a discussion, a meeting or something like that. You, they're like real life scenarios. You're talking about a topic just as we are having this kind of interview and discussion. So yeah, I would say creating videos and doing interviews with other people for my channel as well has massively given me motivation to, to improve those languages or where I have seen, okay, 
it really shows me where I'm I'm lacking cer certain knowledge or certain skills in a language, and then I go and improve that from there. Oh, thanks. Thanks for sharing this with us. Um, so we are receiving a lot of questions, and now I would like to uh, give Stefano the, the opportunity to answer one more. So a lot of questions about routines, right? What, what we do every day to, to learn a new language or more languages. So are there any particular tips you would like to, to give, or would you like to explain what you do? It works for you? Maybe it works also for others? Well, I'm a little bit like Lina. I mean, I'm not a scheduler. I, I cannot schedule my life so that every day at, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock, I do the same thing. But uh, for w when I start a new language, I do try and keep a certain, uh, you know, uh, consistency. Um, and as I said before, if the language is new and difficult, like for example, Georgian, um, I do try to do something every morning, in the morning, because I'm, I'm not pressure and my, my brain works a little bit better not not so much but still and um, so I, I try to um, throw in 15 to 30 minutes of, of Georgian every morning but you know um, I have kids I have a family and life gets in the way more often than not so I do try and um, not beat myself up if uh, if I can't learn Georgian on, on a specific on a on a given day I really don't care um, because the most important thing for me is the fun that is associated with the with the language learning process. If if there's an activity that I don't like, that I don't do, that, that it's not fun for me, I won't do it. I just won't do it. I am convinced that I can learn anything that I really love and that um, and that I find fun in. So. Um, um, I try to avoid things that I don't uh, that I don't find fun. Um, as far as my uh, routine, if if any is concerned, um, I try in in the afternoon, maybe while while drinking my coffee, um, to relax, looking, uh, watching some videos in other languages that I don't get the opportunity to uh, use every day, such as um, Japanese and Chinese stuff like that. Um, and later in the evening, after the kids go to go to bed, um, maybe I throw in some more minutes on other languages that are um, that I know better already, and that I want to to practice uh, reading, listening, whatever. And I do the same thing that Lina does. Um, that is, I try to integrate my other interests uh, with languages so that the um, the maintenance, uh, maintaining maintaining the other languages becomes automatic, becomes second nature. Uh, because for example, I like to watch videos about um, about space, and I do that in Romanian. There is, there is a very good channel uh, in Romanian, Doza um, Despacio, uh, and, and I, I watch videos in, in Romanian about space. It's something that I would do anyway in Italian or English or whatever. So. I do that in Romanian, and it's also an automatic way to to maintain my Romanian. Same thing goes for integrating languages uh, in my life. I I know I'm lucky. I live in a in a city that is very international. That's uh, Brussels. There are people from all over Europe, or even all over the world here, and you can literally go and find your uh, small language practice place. Um, that you want. Uh, around the corner, there's a Portuguese, uh, or there was, now it's closed, obviously, a uh, small restaurant or uh, you know, a place where you can go and grab, grab a sandwich or drink a, co a coffee. And I go there every now and then to practice my Portuguese. And then uh, if an Icelandic friend uh, I do talk them with would um, text me during the day and I answer and I use, the, I use Icelandic. So it's really, it's almost automatic if you're able to to organize your life in a way that languages come to you rather than you needing to go in and, and look for them it everything becomes easier learning new languages and especially maintaining the ones that you already yeah 
Thanks, Stefano, uh, for uh, sharing uh, this uh, part of, uh, of your life. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's time to take another question for uh, Elisa, I think. Um, yeah, so um, I was wondering, I, I know people who are learning uh, languages uh, from the, a similar family, right, from the same family of languages, and people who are learning languages from different families. Uh, are there advantages or disadvantages? And uh, as a multilingual teacher, how do you handle these uh, situations? Okay, so um, I was saying before that for languages which belong to the same family, uh, as long as a you uh, have you keep in mind their specific language language features, so you uh, keep the language separate in your brain, and as long as you practice the languages you want to improve. And uh, uh, this matters not only if you're learning multiple languages at the same time, but in whatever language you want to um, reach a, nice, a, a good level, you, yeah, you, if your aim is to speak the language, you also have to speak it. So um, if, as long as you practice your languages, um, if you're learning one, two, three, ten languages at the same time, or if you are, um, uh, so for languages for the which belong to the same family, it's very easy to pick up uh, not only grammar from a similar language, it really helps, and you don't have to go through the same process over and over again if you do it at the same time. And the second big advantage is that you pick uh, you pick up lots of passive vocabulary. Because let's say that uh, I don't believe in doing 100% the same content in one language and then the other language and then the other language because to me personally it would be too boring. It could it could be fun for one class, but you cannot. I wouldn't structure a lesson which is identical for all the languages because I think at a certain point the student might fall asleep. So classes must be interactive and the students, especially multilingual classes, but also in general, must speak most of the time because uh, it's not the teacher who is uh, training speaking is the student. So uh, to go back to the question, um, the passive vocabulary, it's uh, huge. If you learn a uh, some words because you are practicing something uh, specific in one language and then you study a similar language, then most of the vocabulary will be very similar anyway. So you there is a huge advantage. But what about the different uh, languages which belong to different families? So I, I particularly like the combination of uh, two languages which belong to the same family and one which does not belong to that. Why? Because uh, when you have uh, um, a different language, your brain will thank you because you are not uh, there thinking for one hour or one hour and a half uh, uh, um, trying to keep the two languages separate in your brain, which as I said before, it's really only at the beginning. After a while, you really don't think about that. So um, I could switch uh, into all my languages without thinking for a second. And uh, this is really something very, very important that you want to develop because you don't want to mix languages up. And uh, uh, But when you learn uh, languages which uh, do not belong to the same family, there is also a big advantage. Uh, the bigger advantage is the fact that it doesn't matter what languages you are choosing, and you should choose not a language which is convenient, but a language you're interested in if you want to, uh, to stay motivated and learn it until uh, you reach the level you, you thought um, you wanted to reach in the first place. So uh, once you uh, decided that you want to learn a, a language belonging to a different family, the good thing on one hand it will be a break that you give to your brain because it's on, it's very rare that you start mixing that language with the other language you're, uh, or languages you're learning um, unless you dedicate a huge amount of time on that one language and almost zero to the other. In that case, it's normal. It would happen in any case, because your brain, uh, which uh, which loves economy, uh, it's, uh, ah, okay, so I don't have to use the other language, so I will forget them or I will put them in a drawer, which is more um, further back in my mind. So, and the advantage is that when you learn a new language, it doesn't matter if it belongs to the same family or not, you are still developing your language skills. And that part, uh, 
will help you improve in any language and learn languages faster. I think that most of you heard the, the story, and it's not only a story, it's a true story, that when you learn uh, a second and a third language, it will become easier anyway. It's true that there are some languages where, which are particularly difficult, according to your mother tongue, of, of course, but uh, it will help immensely. And um, as Nicolò said at the beginning, I've uh, studied 25 languages and always found similarities among languages, even among languages which were completely different from each other. So simi by similarities, I don't necessarily mean a word, although it happens. Uh, I also mean that you develop a certain language uh, skill that helps you to understand another bit of grammar, even though different, you can say, okay, this one uh, sounds a bit like that language, but this bit of the grammar sounds a bit like that. Or that word reminds me, although maybe it doesn't have anything to do with that, but you can uh, work with the um, mental associations in order to uh, remember words uh, from a different family, which is, of course, more difficult, but uh, through associations, because a certain word reminds you, although it's really not that word of another word uh, in another language. So it uh, doesn't matter how we put it. I really, I've seen so many advantages in uh, all these years I've been teaching, and uh, uh, I really believe it is possible. I really believe that most of the time when people say that it is not possible, there are two reasons. Either they didn't try, and they just think, okay, it doesn't work for me, and you don't have to learn multiple languages at the same time, it's not your wish, your desire. And the second case is that really they didn't use the right method, and the right method is not one method, it's the method which works for you, but which implies that you're going to practice the languages you want to learn, because it doesn't matter how many, you still have to practice them. And the second thing is that you focus a bit on differences, things which are similar, you will pick up them anyway, but things which are different are what you really should focus on. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> yeah, certainly, yes. Um, yeah, so um, I, I think we are, uh, we have uh, eight minutes left in the call, so time for the last round of questions, I guess. So. Yeah, um, I was um, wondering uh, specifically, um, you know, if uh, the audience has any more questions. I'm just watching the chat. Just a second, please. Um, yeah, it seems like there are probably others. Yes, but I, I wanted to ask one uh, question to Lina again. So it's uh, related to the topic she is interested in. So how does the you know uh, personal development combine with the language learning in uh, your experience or in the experience of people you, you know that follow you? Wow, what a question. I wasn't expecting this. Um, that is a really great question. So how does personal development and language learning align? Is that the question? OK. Yeah, so the question is, uh, there are examples of, of you know, mm -hmm. uh, how the two things go, go together and mm -hmm. how language learning can help also the profession, uh, professional or personal development or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK, well, I think whether it's learning a language, whether it's learning how to play a musical instrument, how to choreograph a dance, whatever skill you are learning, there is a fundamentally there are underlining principles both in terms of learning strategies, in terms of mindset, in terms of you know physical elements or within your body that come into it. So I think what language learning has taught me so language learning was probably the you know i started learning languages when i was seven eight because of, of various reasons and just always continue to do it and what i've seen or, or one thing that it has really taught me is discipline i think the most successful language learners or people who have really achieved a high level in a language you will often find that they also have achieved various things across the board. So not only in, in languages, but also in their careers, in music, in whatever else they choose to pursue. So I think that also what I've seen within my students, it's not always about 
you know, mastering the language per se, but it's also about the skills that you get from it. Can you delay instant gratification and really work towards something? Can you develop that skill of discipline that you can't see the end goal? You can't see how long it's going to take. And can you still trust yourself? Can you still really believe in yourself that you can achieve this goal? And are you willing to work on it? Not only um, if you get there, but until you get there. And I think if there's if there's one key point I can put it down, it's really mindset. Like my mindset towards language learning, I don't see it as being ever, like ever having an end. It's an ongoing process. And what it really teaches you as well, it gets you out of your comfort zone. So when I was younger, I was an extremely shy person. And anyone that you that knows me now would be like, Lena, I, I can't believe that. I don't think that's true. But actually, a lot of my self-confidence developed through language learning. Languages were or like the language classroom, traveling to different countries and speaking in, in, in foreign languages, that was my key to, to, my, to the confident Lena. So it allowed me to, to be someone else. It almost allowed me to, yeah, express other sides of my personality. And I learned how to give presentations in a different language. And I learned how to deal with judgment from other people. And ultimately, that experience helped me really build my internal confidence to know not only can I spend years working on something and continue to work on that and achieve something, but I can make a fool of myself and that's okay. I can make mistakes and that's okay. I really dropped all perfectionistic tendencies. I dropped lack of self-confidence and primarily through language learning. And those skills are transmutable to your career to your your social life to any other aspect because once you have developed those types of skills so discipline self-confidence etc you can translate them into any other area of your life so hopefully that helps yeah definitely thanks so uh time for last two questions one for stefano one for lisa stefano first uh, what is the biggest benefit of learning multiple languages? Well, I think the biggest benefit for me personally um, has been the fact that um, it allows me to switch language when I get frustrated with, with one. If, I, if I'm learning only one language and I get frustrated with one aspect of the language, I don't know, maybe I can't understand, get my head around a grammar aspect or I can't really talk today. Uh, what's happening with me so i get frustrated with that i'm stuck i'm stuck with that uh, but if i have other languages that i can resort to um, i can keep my um, language learning experience a positive one and i i can avoid frustration through through variety so i can use variety to my advantage to my own advantage and and just go with the flow basically um and as I said before, the most important thing for me is, in to, is to enjoy the process. And by enjoying the process, I can learn much, much more efficiently. So that has worked wonders for me. Every time I get frustrated with something, I just switch language. And this gives me the opportunity to open up um, other opportunities to, to keep learning, uh, never stop learning, and enjoy the process. Thanks, Stefano. Uh, uh, I have to rush it to the next question for Elisa. Uh, so Elisa, uh, we're talking about methods now. So uh, would you suggest to use uh, different methods for different languages? Okay, so uh, yes, it really depends on what languages you are learning and how um, and what your level is in general. I prefer, so there are certain things which never uh, change for me, so 
uh, the input part, so the, the amount of input, uh, the fact that I want to practice them, uh, the, what I focus on. Uh, so there are certain things that any language learn, uh, learner needs to know when, when it comes to learning languages, certain words, certain language structures. And this is what I implement in my lessons. I really help students to speak from the very beginning uh, using those structures and those words that anyone can, uh, anyone needs. And then uh, about the methods. So I think everyone is different. It is a part which is uh, the same for everyone. And then there is a part which really depends on your learning style, on your uh, end goal, on how you enjoy learning languages and why you're learning them. And that part is really specific. And according to, for example, the student I have, and they say, ah, I really enjoy that. And I don't, because so many activities, even just either reading or listening or speaking can be done in so many different ways in order to fit, the, let's say, the, the, the best learning style for the, the person who is learning. So there are so many methods. I really don't think uh, that we have the time for that, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so if people want to reach me out, uh, I would be happy to answer uh, those questions. Thanks. Uh, certainly they can reach out to you. Uh, so I would like to put uh, again all the speakers uh, on the screen, please. Yeah, let's uh, say thanks to all of them again. It was a pleasure to have you here. And uh, thank you to all everyone uh, who joined us today for this uh, panel on the multilingual learning. Time to wrap up, and I think see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. bye.